Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Derek, and this is the third episode of the Pokecast for the Nerds. This is the Nerds' official Pokemon podcast. Just be on their channel as well as my channel. Once their channel goes available, we'll be importing the last couple episodes to that. So you guys will be able to view those and maybe have a little bit of fun. And I'm thinking hopefully the next episode we will have people come in. Uh, I, I am talking to a couple people that seems like they would be okay with joining in the conversation because it's really hard to talk for 30 minutes about something uh, by yourself and you know i kind of find it being a little bit easier if we had some people within the community uh doing just that but but let's go ahead and kind of stop for a second and talk about a couple things first we had the 25th anniversary which we kind of covered a little bit it was kind of some predictions we had on the last episode of the pokecast Today, we're going to kind of talk about what happened on Pokemon Day and what is planning to happen in the next year to, or so, which, you know, those are a few big announcements, which was pretty awesome. If you're a Pokemon fan, you definitely, you know, you got some, you got hit pretty good with some surprises. Uh, some were pretty obvious, but some, one in particular was not, and we'll get to that. Uh, we had the Post Malone concert, which was pretty cool. It was, it was all animated, and it was just something really cool to watch. Um, you can kind of tell they put a little, uh, a lot of effort into it. Uh, I watched the, um, there was a, what is her name? Kelly Clark, is it Kelly Clarkson? The chick of fireworks? I don't know. I forgot her name. She had a video out where she's, Running around in skimpy, uh, tight uh, Pokemon outfits, <laughs> which you know, for simps and everything like that, you know, that's that was cool. I mean, I'm not going to say that that was bad because I mean, I like boobs. Boobs are cool and stuff, but I don't know who that was actually advertised for. Like, I, I feel like that wasn't a kids thing, which Pokemon. It's predominantly a kid's thing for the most part, or big kids like me, which, again, what is her name? What is her name? I don't know her name. I'm going to have to look it up. It's going to kill me. It's going to kill me. Probably by the end of this episode, at the very last moment, it's going to hit me. And I'll be like, Shh, that, that's it. That's it. We figured it out. But yeah, there, there was a few uh, musical things, uh, little funny uh, skits and everything that was brought to you on Pokemon Day. Um, the, the Post Malone concert was really cool. Uh, you had that, then you had the other other chick. They talked about some more collaborations throughout the year. But the big thing, the really big thing, was two big announcements. Technically, you could say three, but it was technically just two, um, I guess. And the first thing is remakes of Diamond and Pearl. And there's a lot of people that are divided on this um, just due to the art style and the way they're approaching the game. It seems to me like it's a pretty much um, a faithful recreation of Diamond and Pearl. Now, for me, this will be the first time for me to actually play Diamond and Pearl. I never got to play them. I, I owned them. I, I never played them when it came out. reason why I had, I had them... And they all got stolen. I had I had some. Uh, it, was, it was a few years back. Uh, I was with an ex. Um, this was probably ten years ago or so. And I had uh, all the Pokemon games on DS at the time. This was when the the uh, Nintendo DS and 3DS 3DS just came out, and they were still making Pokemon games for the 2DS. I get well, not the 2DS, the regular DS. I don't know why I'm calling it the 2DS. The naming conventions of <laughs> Nintendo's handheld consoles are really weird. Just, I, I don't know. I don't know. Microsoft's doing the same thing with their Xbox Series X. And uh, yeah, Nintendo did it with the Wii U. So the naming conventions for consoles are kind of weird. But we're not really going to talk about that. But um, yeah, I never got to play uh, Diamond and Pearl. Uh, the thing I got to play before Diamond and Pearl... Um, I think Diamond and Pearl was already out when these came out. Was Heart Gold and Heart Sil uh, Soul Silver, which 
are my favorite games, some of my favorite games of all time. Because when I was a kid, I loved, absolutely loved Pokemon on Game Boy. Uh, I bought a, I, I had, originally I had the big, giant, fat, original Game Boy uh, get on the school bus. We had a link cable. My friend, he had a Game Boy collar and I had a Game Boy. And, you know, we would trade on Pokemon Red and Blue and I saved a bunch of money up. And I, I remember this, I went to, uh, Kmart or Walmart, I forget where it was, and I bought a Game Boy Color. It was the purple uh, see-through, which was really cool. It still looks really awesome today. I don't have it anymore, but I wish I did because it was it's still pretty cool. I may try to get one, maybe a modded one with a backlight. But already on 3DS, I already have all the original games on digital, so I don't really necessarily need them, but. I may get some for uh, just to show off in the collection. Maybe buy some re reproductions and some re reproduction cases. Uh, I don't really mind. I just want something to showcase. I don't care if they're legit or not. I just I just like them. I, and some of my some of my games that I bought for the, the 2DS, like I have uh, Pokemon Platinum, Pearl, and Diamond, and Soul Silver, which I bought as reproductions because I. I couldn't find um, a good deal on, on it, especially with the case. Now, the case I have for Soul Silver is the legit case, but for Diamond, Pearl, and uh, Platinum, they are reproductions. And I, I don't really recommend buying reproductions if you plan on playing them, but if it's something you want to put in, like, as a display, yeah. But they do guarantee the games do work, and I have them playing Soul Silver, and I haven't had any problems with it so reproductions are kind of iffy uh, i'm not going to say don't buy them i'm not going to tell you to buy them but if you are a collector and you don't care if it's authentic then that might be a good step so you don't have to pay an exuberant amount of money on uh physical copies of these games but the way they're doing the new i think it's a brilliant diet brilliant pearl or something i i pre-ordered them uh let me actually let's let me look that up that way <laughs> i can't i'm i'm not talking out of my ass the whole time okay it is okay it is shining pearl and brilliant diamond those are the games that are coming to the nintendo switch nothing's coming over to the 3ds i think they're done with the 3ds at this point the switch is taking over the handheld portion of the market which is awesome because the switch is great i love the switch i love mine absolutely love mine um we've been playing pokemon uh actually we've been playing pokemon tournament and i got sick last week so i didn't stream at all and on friday i did try to stream and we had some problems technical wise and that just didn't really work out but yeah, I love my Switch. It's it's great. It's great. But I'm really excited about these two games because a this will be the first time for me to touch those games, um, and they are faithful recreations of them down to the chibi graphics, which there's a lot of people tumor because it does have chibi graphics and it reminds me of Link's Awakening on the Switch, which is really tv characters and just it's cute i mean it is cute i guess and one of the things that's weird about it is when you go into the actual battles um it switches to the art style that you see in possibly sword and shield which yeah i mean it's cool like a lot of rpgs do that especially back in the day uh, final fantasy 7 is a good example like you have these uh, little little guys, badly done models, and once you go into a battle, it switches to you know a better presentation of the models and actually look pretty good. They actually look like people for the most part. But yeah, a lot of people are torn about that. I I, I don't understand why. I don't think. I mean, graphics are important, but they're not as important as the gameplay. As long as the game plays like Pokemon. If they, you know, add a few things to make it, like, improvements, basically. If they make it a little bit better, then, you know, that's a plus. But I don't think the graphics problem is a problem for this game. I think a lot of people are expecting, 
you know, these Diamond and Pearl remix to kind of mimic what you see with the Let's Go games or the Sword and Shield, which again, that that is cool. That that is that is a a valid point um, against that, saying that well, why was Sword and Shield and Let's Go? Why did they have this art style, and why does Diamond and Pearl have these chibi graphics that looks like an up res version of the DS games? Well, yeah, I, me, I, I, I disagree with the fact that the, the graphics are super important. I just want to play the game. That's all I want to do. If it gives me another Pokemon experience to play this year, I, I, I pre-ordered both of them. Um, they come out, it looks like, well, there's no date for them yet. <laughs> right now, the placeholder is December 31st of 2021. Which I say, if I had to guess, if I had to guess when they come out, I would say probably in November, December, there'll be a holiday game. Um, probably they'll have a bundle for these. And this is also, they're saying that there's going to be a new Switch model introduced. This, so, so this could be a showcase, which... Yeah, it's not the game doesn't look like it, it it shouldn't have any problems running on this hardware. And actually it probably wouldn't have any problems running on a 3DS or the, well at least a new 3DS. The newer model that had um upper, like better graphic capabilities. Um but just just to play Diamond and Pearl for the first time um on a bigger screen is something I'm excited about. I, I want to know the story uh, stories within the games. I, I would like to see more remakes like that coming to the Switch. Shit, I would like to see Heart Gold and Soul Silver with the same you know style, or, or even may, maybe Let's Go Gold and Silver. I would be fine with that. Definitely be fine with that. But some people they didn't really care for the Let's Go games, and you know. They were what they were. They, they were for casual new players. But there was also for older players that was just hopping back in after years and years. And what's a better way of coming back uh, to Kanto? What was it Kanto? Yeah, it was the Kanto region. There's no, there was, you know, as me coming back for the first time in almost 20 years uh, playing these games, going back to Kanto was nostalgic. Um, even though, you know, it's basically po Pokemon Go style gameplay mechanics, which I love Pokemon Go, so I have no problem with that. I have no problem with the fact that Let's Go exists, and if, if you want to fight about it, we'll fight. Let's take it to the streets. Let's take it to the streets. Nah, let's not fight. I, I don't want to fight, but I will. If I have to, I will. I will... I will take up for Let's Go games. <laughs> Just let them happen. Just let them happen. And I'll be fine. I'll be fine with that. But let's kind of move away from that and talk about the big announcement. The really big announcement. Something everybody wanted. And this is kind of... We're going back to the same region as the Sinnoh region. Um, the same place that Diamond and Pearl take place in. But this has taken place in a long, long time ago. Like, I think 100, 100 years ago or something like that. Where, you know, they're creating these primitive Pokeballs. And it looks like Breath of the Wild meets Pokemon, basically. So if you like Zelda Breath of the Wild and you've seen this game, which is called Pokemon uh, Legends Arceus. I think that's what it's called. Pokemon Legends. Let's see, Pokemon Legends Arceus, yeah. So, yes, yeah, Pokemon Legends Arceus, which was really cool, and it, there's a lot of things I would like to see with this. Um, you've seen this trailer, uh, it's talking about uh, the, cr the creation of the Sinnoh region's Pokedex. This is the first time the Pokedex would have been created for that region, and... You know, you, it shows you going through these planes. Um, you having battles on the fly. I, they don't seem like they're random encounters like all the other Pokemon games. This is like you see them and you battle them. Like kind of similar to how the wild area works. 
but it seems like it's a little bit deeper. And it's same with the animation. It doesn't look like, you know, they don't just stand there like they do on the <laughs> regular games. Same way they've been doing for years and years and years. This looks like a refined Pokemon game that everybody has wanted for years. A true console Pokemon game. And the fact that this thing is came out of nowhere, not, nobody expected that. Everybody wanted that. Everybody wanted to see something like that. And I'm glad it exists because, damn, it's really cool. If you haven't got a chance, go go to YouTube, type in Pokemon uh, Legends Arceus, and check that out. Just check it out. There's, there's so much cool stuff. I mean, it'd be kind of cool. You get on a uh, one of the horse fucking, not a, not a ponytail. You'd probably burn yourself on a ponytail. Um, you know, there, there, uh, there are some horse Pokemon and I forget their name. Mudsdale? Mudsdale. I think it's Mudsdale. Uh, get on their backs and roam around and find Pokemon, get in battles, uh, try to figure out the mystery be behind Arceus, which Arceus is pretty much the god of Pokemon. Well, if, if you didn't know that, um, it's pretty much the god, the creator of all Pokemon and the whole universe, basically. I don't know if that counts, like, towards humans. Did Arceus create humans? Like, if he created the universe of, basically, did he create the humans within the universe? Or is there another... We're not getting into religion. <laughs> I don't want to open that can of worms because... <laughs> I'm sure there'll be a lot of pissed off people who's like, why would you bring in religion? I mean, that's almost as bad as bringing in politics, which we're not doing that either. But it does raise a question. Did Arceus create the humans within the Pokemon universe? Now, I don't know a whole lot about Arceus. Again, I haven't played Diamond and Pearl. And I don't know much about... I'm pretty sure that's when Arceus was introduced um if i'm right and, and you could tell me uh if i'm wrong if i'm wrong and it probably would have been good if i would have played through the games and then done this but i want to leave i want the first time playing these games to be with the remakes um i i want that to be my first introduction to these games and i i'm excited to see the story unfold for the first time for me um, I want to know about Arceus. I want to know about the other uh, legendaries. Um, I want to. I want to catch them all. Fill up my Pokédex. Stream a little bit of it. Um, and we're we're going back to Diamond and Pearl again. We'll go back to Arceus here in a moment. But yeah, I, I just can't imagine like being able to sit down and play these for the first time uh, as a thirty. Well, I'll be 34 by the time these games come out. I'm, I'm a boomer, basically, I guess. Am I a boomer? I hope not. I'm not a boomer. I don't I don't think so. <laughs> but, I mean, I could be. I could be a boomer. I guess I'm a boomer when it comes to Pokemon. I'm still a Gen 1, Gen 2 guy. I can't help it. That's what I... That's what I was... I was born this way, baby. That's... 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 It. I was born this way. <laughs> I was a Gen 1 and Gen 2-er. I still am. Back in my day, we didn't have EXP share. We, we, we raised all our Pokemon one at a time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's about it. And we, we, you know, Wizards of the Coast was doing Pokemon cards whenever I was into it. So, a lot of things has changed since... The last time we've actually, well, me, this is the last time since I actually sat down and played Pokemon until last year when I started playing Sword and Shield, uh, which I did play the Let's Go games when I came out. I played Let's Go Eevee, and I just finished Let's Go Pikachu uh, a few weeks ago on stream, which we're going to finish up, hopefully, we're going to finish up Pokemon Tournament, and we're going to head into another game series that I've never played before, which is the Pokemon the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. Uh, I guess that's a remake of uh, Rescue Red and Blue, I guess. I, I don't know. A lot of people say it's fun, and I myself haven't played it, so that'll be a first time for me, too. I'm a virgin when it comes to a lot of Pokemon stuff. I can't help it. 
I can't, I'm like a virgin touching Pokemon for the very first time. It's what it feels like. And my Madonna reference, which is aged and has not aged well. Only, you know, a select few people that was my age would probably know that. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But Pokemon Arceus, um, that's looking incredible. I, I just I'm trying to think of the possibilities. Like, I see, I played a little bit of Breath of the Wild. I do own it. And I like the whole place is traversal. Like, you see a surface, you can climb on it. You can, you know, fly, uh, glide and everything, which that'd be kind of cool in an Arceus if you'd be able to do some gliding and a lot of the climbing mechanics. It, it'd just be really awesome to have a Pokemon game with Breath of the Wild mechanics, especially how tight that game is. And the graphics, they look great. They, again, they look like Breath of the Wild, which is great. It's a good looking game. The art style is great uh, to me. To me, it's really good. I'm just kind of wondering how they're going to do the story. Um, I don't know how it's going to work. And I'm wondering if there's going to be any co-op. Um, maybe, you know, open, like, run into other players. Kind of how you do within uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. You can actually run into other players within the Wildlands. Which was really cool to me. Like, seeing other people catching Pokemon... Uh, we didn't really see them catching them. They're just standing there and initiating battles. But you can run into people and you can have these small little chats with them, which was all predetermined. Like, you just click, oh, Fred's got this. Hello, I, here's a berry. I didn't want a berry. I wanted, I just wanted to be your friend. But no. <laughs> It'd just be really cool to do that. Just... Breath of the Wild with the Wildlands. Pokemon, you just go catch them with your old style Pokeball, which made from acorns, which Pokeballs were made from acorns to begin with, and that was introduced a long time ago, and I think it was uh, gold and silver. I I'm pretty sure uh, that's when that was introduced, I'm, I think. Um, don't, don't, uh, yeah, I, I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was gold and silver they introduced where you could go to the guy, you give him acorns, and he give you pokeballs, depending on what kind of acorn you have. Um, it's just be kind of cool to see if they do night and day cycles, weather cycles, um, just all kinds of really cool stuff. Maybe, maybe you can walk up to other players on the fly and have battles. Like, hey, I don't like you. I am going to fight you with my Pokemon. And I'm probably going to lose because I'm terrible, but I'm going to try. I'm humble. I got these Rattata here that I'm just going to use to um, quick attack your fucking Charizard. Yeah. <laughs> cringe. Cringe. It's cringe inducing. I need to know what you guys think. What would you want in a game like that? Um be kind of cool to have your fishing poles and catching like Magikarp, Goldeen, Remoraids. Octil is Octillery? Is Remoraid, was that in Diamond and Pearl? I could be wrong. Um, but in the trailer, you got to see some of the Pokemon. You sneak up on them um, and you just toss the Pokeball in real time. And from what I could tell, you don't have to initiate battles with it. Um, but there are battles that take place, which is, seemed really cool how they was doing it. Um, it didn't seem like an encounter where it was flash over to the battle style um, animation. It just seemed like it happens right then and there. And you choose your um, commands uh, for your Pokemon instead of, you know, like I said, doing an encounter which just switches over to you know, a different screen, but you've seen in every single Pokemon game where you just see the back, see the back of your Pokemon and they just nudge a little bit and that's the attack. The, the animations look like they're pretty cool to me, to me. I, I think they do, but some people may not. I don't know. I think there's more people that are super excited for this game because it did come out of nowhere. I didn't expect it to come out. I, you know, I thought 
what they was going to do, and this was me, I thought, which was a no-brainer, which was Diamond and Pearl remakes. But I didn't expect them to go that direction, which I'm fine with. But I thought they was going to do the Diamond and Pearl remakes and a Let's Go Johto. Which, that's not out of the question. It's still the 25th anniversary of Pokemon. There could be an announcement down the road with another Nintendo Direct. Um, you know, we still have... I mean, this year is big. Uh, I believe this year is also the 35th anniversary of Zelda. So, that's another thing. And we just had the anniversary of Mario. And, which, if you guys haven't already... Uh, pick up the the Mario All-Stars 3D. Be sure to get those because those will no longer be produced after this month. Uh, those will be collector's items. I bought mine digitally because I didn't want to lose it. But the majority of my games on Switch are physical item, physical, but for that, I wanted a digital copy. I don't know. I don't know why. I just, I just did. Um... But yeah, be sure be sure to get those games before you can't anymore. Uh, there was a lot of speculation too that there was going to be some sort of anthology collection um, or a collection of Pokemon games, uh, kind of similar to the all, 3D All Stars, which they bundled with um, some of the original games. I don't think there was going to be um, Uprez or anything like that or remade. I think it was just going to be. Basically, like Mario All Stars, you get those games the way they were. Just maybe they'll look fine, better on a Switch for the most part. I thought they was going to do that too, but they didn't, which I was kind of shocked that they didn't because that would have been perfect. Uh, really, some type of anthology collection, which would have been a good time to do that. But you know, they may be pulling back a little bit. Because Nintendo is apparently going to be releasing a new version of the Switch this year. Um, that's that's the big rumor. Um, it's supposed to be able to compete with a base model PS4. Which, that's pretty good. I mean, Nintendo's not about, like, hardware, like, advanced hardware. They're more about innovation. Um, which, the Switch is pretty damn innovative. Um... I love it. I loved it since it first came out, so I'm really excited. I will actually pick up the new Switch uh, whenever it comes out, depending if it does get announced. I don't know. It could be. might not be. I don't know. It's Time will tell. Time will tell. But we have a few more minutes left. I wanted to say, do a couple predictions. Um, what I think is coming in the future and within the 25th anniversary this year number one a new set based on this is what i think it's going to be a neo discovery uh evolutions set or a continuation of evolutions of a pokemon trading card game we've not had the 25th anniversary set announced the only thing we have we have mcdonald's which was a shit show it was but i did get my pikachu so i'm happy about that i didn't get my the rest of my starters except for Bulbasaur. I need I need a Charmander and I need a Squirtle, but I don't have them yet. And hopefully it will eventually. Um, <clears throat> but we had that, and we also had the cereal cards, which again it came with a Pikachu, and there was a Galarian Ponyta, which was the chase card in that, which I don't have. That I do have the Pikachu, which that came in every pack. So uh, what I would do, I would recommend saving those. For future, because that was the only way he was going to be able to get those cards to begin with. And now they're doing the jumbo cards, which is pretty cool. I, I don't personally, I don't care for jumbo cards. I can see people do. I do have a jumbo card, the Pikachu. Uh, it was 10 bucks, so I picked one up, and I do have one. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get any of the other packs. It's, it's cool how they're going to roll it out. Every month is going to be a different uh, set. Uh, of starters until you get down to the last month, well, the last month of the generation stuff, and it's going to be the Kanto starters, which is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I mean, the cards are pretty cool. The the folder's nice. Now, some of the, there's a, the two different par 
products for that. There is a product that just contains a folder and the jumbo card, which is a Pikachu, or there's one that's the folder, the Pikachu, as well as I think two or three packs. I think they're Vivid Voltage and Sun and Moon base set, which Vivid Voltage is still lit, so that's it's still hard to find. Which um, I, that's my prediction. I, I think they're going to have a Neo Discovery style evolution set. Now I could be wrong. But it would be nice to see something like that and get a EX or Mega or VMAX versions of the original starters, like a Typhlosion, which Cyndaquil family is my favorite starters. It's the Cyndaquil family. Which is awesome because Arceus, you can actually choose Cyndaquil as one of your starters. There's not enough Cyndaquil love, man. There needs to be more love for Cyndaquil. I mean, it's awesome. It's a, it's a, it's a mole with fire shooting out of its ass. It's really cool to me. I like it. Maybe some people don't like it. I do, and I don't care. I will fight people for that. But also, uh, I, I do think as another prediction, I do think they will announce a Let's Go game. I think it's going to be the Let's Go Johto, the um, Gold and Silver remix. I think that's going to happen. I think that's a no-brainer. That will either. That will get announced, I think. I, I personally think that, but I could be wrong. It's just wishful thinking. I see there are going to be more collaborations, um, music artists, um, as well as big YouTubers. Leon Hart's doing his pop shop, um, which he's going to be selling bass packs for $3.99, which, good luck. You never, don't even try. You're not, you're never going to get them. I'm pretty sure that those packs are already <coughs> sold. I'm pretty sure people already have those. There's going to be people all over the world going to see Leon Hart to get these packs. That won't last long. I doubt it. It's, it's a cool idea. And he does, did say it's going to be one of the biggest um, events in Pokemon history in terms of for the Pokemon card game. But I, I, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. Um, it, it's not worth it. As much as I would love to have a base pack, I, I'll wait. I, I can wait. I, I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> I, I just started buying singles to, because I can't buy, you know, product in the stores. Which that's still a mess. You still can't buy anything in stores right now because as soon as stuff goes out this, with the distributors, a bunch of vultures just take everything. And it's crazy. It's crazy, man. It's really crazy. I kind of wish it would stop. Um, you're seeing right now, I, which somebody posted the other day on Facebook, they're selling a single box ETB of Shiny Face for $150. And this other guy selling two Hidden Fates boxes for $300. Which is crazy. Which is nuts. I personally, I don't want to spend that much money on them. I, they are, they did announce reprints of the Hidden Fates tins. Those are coming. So I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait. I, I've opened up three uh, boxes of Shining Fates, and not including the uh, the Dragon Bolt. I I did Crobat, I did Crobat, and I did a the Pikachu box. I've, I've had my share of Shining Fates. I like Shining Fates, but I'm not going to pour a lot into it. The way I, I collect Pokemon cards is the cards I think look cool. Um, it's the cards that I think that I want in my collect, personal collection. I'm not aiming to get every card in the collection. And there are chase cards I do want, but there might be a chance I'm not going to get them. And that's okay. That's okay to me. Maybe down the road, I'll get lucky and find a pack and it happens to have that. But... I, I'm trying to take my approach from a collector a little bit differently and buying singles, which seems like it's a little bit more expensive, but you know, you're guaranteed that card. Um, you are guaranteed that card, which is cool. Um, that's something I would look into. If you can't find anything and you're looking for a specific card, uh, check out TCG Player, eBay, Macari. Uh, Aunt Macari is expensive. Uh, Macari is basically like Facebook Marketplace. 
Um, I wouldn't completely recommend it. You might be able to find some deals on that, but yeah. <sighs> If you can, like, you, you can still get Japanese sets online. Uh, I've not had any problems getting those, except for some of the bigger sets. They did raise the prices of, like, the Vivid Voltage, is, which is uh, Astonishing Volt Tackle or Volt Tacker in Japanese version of the Vivid Voltage. But, yeah. But other than that, guys, I would like to know what you guys think. Uh, I definitely appreciate you hanging out with me for, you know, about 40 minutes talking about Pokemon and going off wild tangents, <laughs> going off topic like I always do. Uh, if you haven't already, I definitely appreciate you stopping by. Uh, if you're seeing this on the Nerds channel, feel free to hit that follow button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you're seeing it on my channel, be sure to do that too. Once we hit 500 followers, we are giving away a free Pokemon Elite Trainer Box. So that's something cool. Once we hit 1,000, we're giving away a free Booster Box. So just keep that in mind. That is something to look forward to. But other than that, guys, I thank you very much. And I'll see you on the next episode with friends. With hopefully, hopefully friends.